dear God, I know you run everything in this universe. You're the one that set the sun in its position, allowed the moon to rule by night with the stars. You're the one who killed all the kings that came against us. You're the one who saved Abraham Avinu from a furnace. You're the one who saved Daniel from the lions. Daniel, y'all crazy. Daniel, saying Kamatria is Haman. That's why the prophet Daniel changed his name. I think it was Khatash. And if you see and go deep into the Megillah, you're going to see that who killed Daniel? Haman. Crazy. When he was giving messages to Mordechai and Esther going back and forth, Haman got suspicious and had him killed. The Most High. The one who took us out of Egypt with a strong hand. Man, you don't even understand. Ten plagues, he flipped the whole world around, bro. Just for his beloved, the Jews, Israel. Yo, Leviticus 26, 44, I will never ever despise my children, but I will break my covenant with them and annul my bond with them. I am God, their Lord. Why does he say it like that? You know why he says it like that? Because you could bring Muhammad right now from Shamayim or Ganom, wherever he is, and bring him here. And ask him and bring JC from Gehenom. Bring him not here, God forbid, but into the universe or in Shamayim to a heavenly court. And they're going to ask both of them in front of the whole world. No problem. You sold your lives to the world, but we're going to just ask you one question. Did it ever, 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 anywhere in any Bible, ours, yours, or yours, call God? Anything else than the God of Israel? Never. If he broke the covenant with the Jews and made a new covenant with the Christians, why is he not the God of Rome? I don't understand. He still calls himself the God of Israel? Like what, people are not seeing this? Go read in the Quran, bro. It's going to tell you, people of the book, the Jews, you understand? The God of Israel. Yeah, yeah. Allah of Israel. You understand? Get it through your head, bro. I'm done playing games, man, because I see six-hour debates about Christianity, bro. Are you kidding me? I'll break it down in less than 10 seconds, bro. This is a joke. And the craziest thing, yo, these two Jews, bro, 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 yo, listen, listen to me carefully, bro. There's these two Jews in Israel, like Jews for JC, and they take Jews away from the Torah, and not only take them away from the Torah, Fine, you take them away from the Torah. They go to clubs their whole lives and they die. Fine. This is, you take them away from the Torah and bring them to worship a man as a god. I don't understand. Christianity, right off the bat, the first commandment for both the non-Jews and the Jews. I am your god. Don't have any other gods. I don't understand. And they're going to come and try to convince you that a man is a god? And when they quote Isaiah 52, 56, it's talking about Israel, not JC. They just flipped Israel with JC, JC with Israel, and they make everything fit. Like, oh, you see, you see? But I'll give you even deeper than that. Yo, I hope you're listening close, man, because what I'm about to tell you is super deep, especially if you're a Jew that wants to leave the religion. Chas you have the best religion in the universe, the original. The foundation of the universe is the Torah. Are you crazy, yo? They're going to come and try to copy Hashem's book. Look at how many mistakes they made. I told my mother today, yo, God hates adultery. Go look in the Torah. The punishment for adultery is death, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So it's a problem. So I don't understand. So God is going to commit adultery with Miriam. She's married to this guy, Joseph, the carpenter. And God is going to impregnate her? Come on, bro. Like, come on, use your head. But I'll tell you even better than that. Check this. The Christians, they give money to the Jews, right? They buddy up to the Jews. True or false, it's true. If you deny that, you're lying. So now I'm thinking to myself, I said, I don't understand. Why, why do they do that? Because what they'll do is they'll tell you we support Israel, we love Israel, but they'll never tell you that if you don't accept JC as your God, you'll go to hell for eternity. Of course, that's not true. But according to their book, that's true. 
So I said to one Christian, why don't you ever say that? You talk about this, we love Israel, we give money, we donate, we don't. But to tell these Jews that if they don't accept JC as their savior, they're going to hell for eternity. Tell them. No, that you leave out. I wonder why. Because it's all a scam, you understand? This world, I promise you, yo, let me tell you something, bro. To the dudes out there that sin with their eyes with women, man, I promise you, I'll give you the best advice you ever got in your life. Listen, demons are real. A girl, God forbid, that would make an X-rated movie for money, that's demonic. It's like anybody, look at a guy right now, he's arguing with his wife, he gets mad, he throws something. At that second he threw something, he was possessed by a demon. What? Facts. Demonic. So when you look at these girls, sexy, this, that, those are demons. I know it sounds kind of hard, but the devil can make himself look however he wants. Look at this girl. From a little girl, she's like flirting, this, that. She has a spirit of promiscuity in her that comes from a past life. And it's like the Satan is in her. And he makes her look so pretty and so sexy. My God. It's crazy. You could look at a face at a girl. For a second And if it's a very sexy face You can get turned off from that Like the Torah is smart The way they said Don't even look at the finger of a girl And you're gonna come to me Like my nephew What are you talking about I'll go nuts God is gonna make me attracted to women And then deny me the right to kiss them This is sick So I said to him Listen God is like playing chess You understand You looking at it as The pleasure you're gonna get from kissing this girl But God understands That if you kiss this girl It's gonna lead to touching And it's gonna lead to other things And it's gonna lead God forbid to an abortion And then what? So God is already warning you If it's your wife No problem Be with her Enjoy Do what you want But before that Nah You have to remain pure and holy Very difficult bro Nobody today I don't think I couldn't say nobody today But 90% of the world Is Making sins with these kind of things I think Premarital sex for sure I would say 90% of the world does that 90% of the Jews do that It's amazing man When you really think about how low we sunk right now It's bad It's bad, it's bad I know you have to look at the glass half full And I will In a second I'm going to flip it Excuse me, but I want to be so brutally honest with you so you understand. In Egypt, we were the 49th level of impurity. That if we would have went to the 50th, we would have never got saved, bro. We're so close to that level right now. And I'll prove it to you. No respect for the parents. Things that kids would do today to their parents, the Chachamim from back in the day would faint if they saw that. They would not be able to comprehend it will boggle their brain, I promise you that. Bleed head I promise you that. It will boggle their brain to see a kid slap his father or something like that. God forbid. Oh my God. Not a good look, bro. Not a good look. So the kids are very disrespectful today. Everyone depressed. Tons of sins. Tons of immodesty. Tons of anger. Tons of war. Tons of everything connected to death. Why? Because when you get away from God... You're gonna meet the devil What do you think? You think you're gonna run away from God And go where? To the beach And nobody's there And you're by yourself just chilling? The devil is lurking The minute you come to that beach All of a sudden This girl That girl What do you think? The devil doesn't know what he's doing? So all the men out there Right now with me Say this prayer Dear God The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob In the merit of our forefathers Please forgive us When we become weak of flesh And sin with our eyes Please forgive us When we follow animalistic desires To pleasure Ourselves For selfish reasons Please God Understand that we regret these sins We know the Jews In the past when they went with the women of Minjan There was a plague Uh any time there was a modesty Listen, look how did Bilam curse the Jews Every time he went to curse them Blessing, so how did finally did he get the Jews to sin He told Balak Yo, send your daughter like a prostitute <laughs> And I promise you they'll sin And that's exactly what happened bro That's the whole story with Zimri and Cosby Zimri ben Salu You know what kind of disrespect you'd have to do that in the- I'll give you such a great parallel yo Zimri Ben Salud did it 
right? In the middle of the day, in front of Moshe Rabbeinu, took a girl into his tent and got busy, Pirchas killed him. Who else did something like that? Avshalom did that. To who? To King David's ten concubines in the middle of the day. He went and slept with them for everyone to see. It didn't mean he did it in public, but he went in and everyone got the point, you know, what he was doing. Avshalom. Listen, let me tell you something. Avshalom, they said, this really bugs me out. They say he was the best looking dude. So besides, I think Adam Marishon or as good looking. But this is what it says in the book of Samuel. He did not have a blemish from the top of his head to the bottom of his toe. And he was like a perfect, like God made him like the best looking guy. So why do I say that? Because I like guys? Nah, you stupid. Never. I said that because he could have used his looks to really bring Jews closer to God. Instead, he used his looks to take people away from King David. Scary. Scary, scary, scary. Now let me break something down since we spoke about gays or whatever, liking dudes. Look, I'm going to break this down to you so deep. So deep. So look, the gay people as their flag, what do they use? A rainbow. Think about all the symbols they could have used. Why Dafka did they come with a rainbow? You know why? I'll tell you why. Because it's the one thing that God does not like to look at. Even God himself, when he makes a rainbow, he's not looking at it. I'll tell you why. Because it reminds him of all the children he had to kill. And not only that, he's telling you in this area right now, you see that rainbow? Say the bracha, blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe. Who made a pact with man to never destroy the world again with a flood. Just like that. And you turn away. Why? Because when you stare at the rainbow and enjoy from it, it makes God sad. So these gay people doing a gay pride parade in Yerushalayim makes not only Hashem sad, it makes him burning with anger, bro. Go read the Torah. You're going to see what I'm saying. Listen. Look, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, right? The Shema, everybody says it three times a day or at least a bunch of times in their lifetime. Did anybody stop and think what the Shema really says? My friend Taz, who I really care about, bro, he'll like tell you, God doesn't punish, God doesn't punish, and you'll show him, this, the punishment with the flood, the punishment with the snow, nah, it's this, daddy, and mercy, nah. and I'm thinking to myself, the Shema, bro, what does it say in the Shema? If you listen to me, I will give you rain in its proper time. You will gather in your grain and your oil, and you will be protected in the good land I gave you. But if you do not, my anger will rise, and I will shut the heavens, and you will perish from a famine. <laughs> so what are you saying? That God is not punishing for sins? Not only is he punishing for sins, he'll smash you for sins. See, this is the one thing about Hashem that I love more than anything. And if I start to really cry, don't get nervous, bro. <laughs> Real talk. The one thing about Hashem, well, I shouldn't say it like that. There's a billion things. But one of the things about Hashem that really, really draws me close to him is that he forgives. Hashem forgives if you come in truth to repent he will one billion percent forgive you I promise you that that's the one thing about Hashem I love so much is that he forgives no matter what bro if you come to him contrite he'll forgive you look at the story with El Eliezer Ben Elazar or Eliezer Eliezer ben Dordia. Tell you such a dope story about this dude, bro. He was like the biggest player, bro. Went with every prostitute in the world. And there was one prostitute that he was never with. And finally he went to be with her. And right after they finished having the act, she burped. And she said like this, just like this burp will never return to my mouth. Eliezer ben Dordia, boom, she banged on the table, will never get into heaven. Like a demon, she said it. 
So Eliezer ben Dordaya, he got scared. He got so scared, so he runs outside and he falls down on the floor. He looks like he's not a religious dude, but he understands here was a message from Hashem deep. So he runs outside, he falls on the floor, he looks up and he sees two huge mountains. And he goes, mountains, oh mountains, please pray for me. He didn't know how to pray. So the mountains looked at him and said, pray for you. We're too busy praying for ourselves. He said, oh moon, oh moon, please pray for me. The moon responded the same way. The stars responded the same way till finally he got the point. The only way to repent is if you do it yourself sincerely and from the bottom of your soul. So he started to cry. And I guess the shame, the guilt, the regret became so much. I think he got a heart attack and died. He cried and died. If I'm not mistaken, that's how the Gemara says it. He cried and died. Eliezer ben Dordean, when he died, there was a bakol, a voice from heaven that said, called him a rabbi, Eliezer ben Dordea. Now just think about that story. Hashem took all his sins and wiped them away. And these are deep sins. I told you it was like every prostitute that ever lived. Hashem will erase that, bro. Look at Rachav. Rachav was like a madam. <laughs> doing a lot of sins. Having women under her do sins, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm almost sure she was a madam, but she might have just been, God forbid, a prostitute. Whatever it is, it's not good. Either way, it's a problem. And who married her? Yoshua ben Nun. Now you ask yourself, Yoshua ben Nun is going to marry a prostitute? Never. She did tshuva. She changed. They taught her about the the God that brought the Jews out of Egypt. She was the one who basically said, look, God did miracles for the Jews. Let's be a little bit smart. You know, she was one of these people that saw the miracles, heard about the miracles, and realized there is a God to the world, and He's the God of Israel. Yo, let me tell you something. I'm moving to Israel. I was born in Israel. I'm a Jew. And I'm proud to be a Jew. Even though today Jews don't represent Hashem the right way. And most Jews. You know, Hashem, we're not. Something I learned from the prophet Elijah, yo, may he get merit. I say it like I'm going to give the prophet Elijah merit. Nah, I don't have that much strength and power to do that. But what I will say is that I learned from the prophet Elijah not to badmouth the Jews. No matter how bad they are. Never bad mouth Israel because those who curse Israel will be cursed and those who bless Israel will be blessed. Now, you tell me, oh, you want me to bless the Israeli government? They're lefty, they're this. No, I'm not telling you to do that. You shouldn't curse them either though. You understand? That's the whole point. And that brings me to my next point. Yo, Yitzchak, this is for you, homie. Now listen, I'm going to break it down. I don't want to go now and destroy this Rabbi Friedman, Manus Friedman. He's this, he's that, and that. I don't like that. I see rabbis do that, and it gets too much, yo, where it starts bashing and putting in. This is what I'm talking about. Don't talk bad about the nation of Israel. Now, there's always exceptions to the rule. He's an exception to the rule, but does that mean you don't keep it classy? Absolutely not. Now you keep it extra classy, so you say like this. To any of the Jews out there listening... Trust me and take it from me. He is a heretic. He changes and flips the words of the Torah. He makes it sound like there's no punishment. Everything's okay. Makes jokes. Inappropriate. Whatever you want. Times infinity. So stay away from Rabbi Manus Friedman. That's it. I never say names. This guy asked me to speak about it. His name you could say. You could say. But I'll I'll say something that I don't think any other... Speaker says, and if they do, God bless them. But I will say this, Yitzchak, and I want you to understand where I'm coming from, my brother. Again, I'm breaking it down to you. Those who curse Israel will be cursed. Those who bless Israel will be blessed. The prophet Elijah spoke bad about the nation of Israel. They don't keep your laws. They don't keep your circumcision. Hashem took the prophecy away from him, killed him, took him up to heaven in a chariot of fire and gave the prophecy to Elijah, to Elisha. Go check, bro. Go read. And you can understand what I'm telling you. It's 1 billion percent true. There were other people that did that. And I wish I would remind me right now off the top of my head. I can't really remember, but I promise you there's about four or five examples of people that spoke bad about the nation of Israel and got hurt for that. 
So here, Elijah spoke about the people that were breaking circumcision and stopped doing it and were they were ungrateful. They went against God. They were it was horrific. And he was only saying the truth. But he got mad. You understand? He got mad. And that's how the Satan does it. That's why I see some of these rabbis. They start talking about this dude. And then they really start, yo, five minutes into the talk, they're already destroying his whole family. You understand? That's too much. I told you. You don't give too much attention to these people. Because when you do that, you give them power. There's some people that are very slick, bro. Like Lavan. Naval, flip the words, bro. It's craziness. Flip the letters. Lavan, in reverse, it's Naval, criminal. Smooth talker, soothsayer. You understand? People like that. You gotta give them props. It's just a great rapper. Knows how to do poetry good, whatever. This is just a gift from God. And he uses it to take God's children away from him. Like I told you in the comments. You're going to go and take God. You're going to do Jace for, I don't know, Moti and I forgot this other guy. God, these guys, these two guys, bro, when I land in Israel, I hope and pray to Hashem I don't see these two guys. These two guys, bro, are so damaging the Jewish religion, it scares me. Because if you look at the way they talk, they're so slick. They come like these self-righteous, nice people, like they would never yell. Yo, they're so evil, these two guys. Monty, and I can't remember the other guy's name, yo. I want to say Elda, but it's not. But I'll tell you something I heard that I like a lot. Datan and Aviram, every time they're mentioned in the Torah, it's a problem. That's what they label them as troublemakers. Every verse in the Torah connected to these two Jews was Mamash a problem. Crazy. Now you're going to tell me, oh, I just spoke bad about the nation or not. That's not speaking bad about the nation of Israel. That's teaching you a lesson. If I tell you, you're Ovan ben Navat, put uh, idols by Dan so the people don't go to Yerushalayim to praise over there. That's not talking about Shonara. Right. That's telling you facts of something that happened and for you to learn that that's what happens when a king <coughs> gets an ego and doesn't want to go to Yerushalayim and wants the people to come to him. See, this is what happens when there's no unity. Things like this happen. Idols get built And the way to Shalim gets cut off So the people have to praise this idol It's crazy Jews making idols? Yes, Menashe put an idol in the temple Man, when I tell you I tell you this is real talk What I'm about to tell you right now, bro The Jews killed two prophets Isaiah and Zechariah Can you imagine a Kaddish Baruch Hu? That they're going to kill your prophet. The prophet is going to... They threw Jeremiah in a pit. Yo. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. See, this is the thing that gets under my skin a little bit. That bothers me. And I'm going to tell you what it is. You can't kill your prophet, bro. It's one thing you don't like the message. It's one thing... But to kill Hashem's prophet? That's not... Nah, come on. It's almost like you could say, Hashem, how could you let that happen? Right? If it was your prophet and he gave your holy name, how did you allow it? Obviously, I shouldn't have an answer. I don't know. That I don't know. And if I don't know, I learn from Rashi. I keep my mouth closed. But that's a good question to ask. Why would you let a prophet get killed? Maybe there was a flaw in the prophet. Maybe I shouldn't allow this to happen as an atonement for some of the sins of the people and at the same time teach us that when you do something like that, that's what happens with Nebuchadnezzar. He came and conquered Yushalayim for that. And I'll never forget when Nebuchadnezzar, his general came and he saw blood in the temple courtyard bubbling. No, I don't think actually it was in the temple courtyard. It was inside the, inside the temple. And it was bubbling on the floor. And he looked at the, the priests and the people there, the Levites, and he said to them, what's this? And they said, no, we don't know. This is how it's been for God knows how many years. So what is it? We don't know. Nebuchadnezzar Dan says, you don't know. What do you think? I'm dumb. Or he took out his sword. I don't know. He probably killed somebody right there. They got scared. And they told him, we killed our prophet. That's the blood of the prophet Zechariah. Go Google 
what Nebuchadnezzar did. 93,000, something like that. Some crazy number of people he killed. Then he went home that night after he murdered God knows how many thousand. And then did Shuva, became a convert. Go, it's craziness, yo. God, I love the Torah so much. And if you listen to my talk, you see I touch on a lot of info from the Torah. It gives me a lot of wisdom, bro. A lot of wisdom. It gives me such a good way to think. Like if I commit a sin right away, Chuva, right away, bro. I'm not waiting. God forbid even a second. Why? I tell you why. You drop ketchup on your white t-shirt. If you wash that within three seconds, it will not leave any trace of a stain. Any. Now let it sit for 30 seconds. It's going to leave a stain. You understand? You have to scrub it. You might have to put some baking soda with lemon and vinegar. (laughs) Oh my goodness, yo. Hashem. (laughs) <laughs> Unbelievable bro How much I love you Akadosh Baruch Hu. So like I was saying before Hashem He forgives He forgives bro As long as you come Imagine I don't know bro You did things to hurt your wife And then She's forgiving you You come sincerely crying I'm so sorry I shouldn't have done it and then she forgives you and she keeps forgiving you and you keep going against her but she keeps forgiving you you know what that's going to do if you're a real person it's going to make you fall in love with her more and that's what I do with Hashem I fall in love with him because I know going back to sins I did when I was a young kid you know like any normal Jewish kid kissing girls getting busy this cursing that you know whatever God, how many times Hashem could have punished me and he did not. And I didn't even do tshuva back then. I didn't even know what tshuva was. I wasn't even concerned with it. Listen, the minute I found God, and I knew he was real. I knew. I knew. I'll tell you how I knew. When I really started to contemplate that we're in a ball, an earth, rotating around the sun. First of all, I don't feel like we're rotating anything. If anything, I feel like the sun rotates. But to put check, we are rotating in a ball in the middle of space around the sun in the only place in space that can inhabit the human race. If that's not enough to let you know there's somebody out there that's running the show, you're tripping. But then I needed to know that his word was real. And even though I do not listen to this speaker today, and I just do my own thing now, but I will say, and I would say the, probably the first four years I was religious was because of him. And this rabbi, <coughs> excuse me, is a good guy, but I ended up not really liking his style too much and then that kind of made me do my own videos but I will always give props to that rabbi and I'll tell you who he is it's Rabbi Yosef Mizrahi he's the one that made me keep Shabbat I used to listen to his lectures I liked the way he spoke great speaker funny charismatic really a nice guy but when I started to really study the Torah really deep not somebody feeding it to me. I realize it's all about being humble. It's all about seeking peace and pursuing it. Meaning if you're a rabbi and you're making videos making fun of other rabbis, like denigrating them and like really putting them down and making fun of them, that's not the Torah. It's not the Torah. You could say he's disgusting, he's a pig. Don't ever listen to him. Even that, Hashem, I don't even think would say a word. But start really making fun of him that's not good can embarrass him in public he's a rasha who cares you still embarrass somebody in public but don't get used to ever doing that ever this is just my personal opinion you know what I mean but I promise you check you're gonna see what I'm saying is real it doesn't say in the Torah seek peace and pursue it it doesn't say keep it classy always it doesn't but I promise you it will say things very similar to that 
Kika, Kika, Hashem gave me Kika. That's so dope. Keep it classy, always. Camp Kika. I just love the way that flows off the tongue. That one day Hashem is going to blow it up, God willing. It's just to bring his children closer. And like I said, yo, we have to always give respect where respect is due. So let me just tell you, Yosef made a sin when they called him, our father, your servant. He should have said something. He didn't. They said it five times. He remained silent, but an interpreter said it. So it was said 10 times. He lost 10 years of his life, died at 110. Respecting your mother and father brings you long life, which means if you do not respect your mother and father, you will lose years off your life, God forbid. Let me repeat that because I want all the kids out there really that respect me or respect my talks to listen to what I'm telling you. It doesn't say respect your mother and father if they're a good person. It's not what it says. There is a level of gratitude that you must have for your parents no matter what. Now, of course, there's exceptions to rules. Your father tries to stab you with a knife. Yes, to run away from him. But you understand what I'm saying. Within normalcy, if... You have to train your brain to know that if your father teases you or puts you down or whatever plays with you or even puts you down, but within limits, you know what I mean? Where you can kind of take it and you can eat it really if you really want to be honest. You must do that. You must do that. I remember one time. I don't like saying this, yo, because it's... It's not good that I said this, but I like saying it now to show you that I did tshuva for it. And I don't ever think I asked Hashem for forgiveness for that, so I'm going to do it now. 